Hey geometry students, now you might be wondering, as this is a geometry video, why we're looking at justifying solutions of equations. Isn't that really algebra? Well, of course, solving equations is more an algebra thing, even if we use it in geometry. Really, here's the purpose here, and this is different than the stated goal. The purpose in me teaching you to justify solutions of equations is to lead you into the thought process that it takes to correctly write geometric proofs. And you know proofs are coming. They're coming soon. This is your introduction into how you're going to write proofs. In this video, you're going to learn to use algebraic properties, or, well, algebraic properties, yes, but properties of equality to justify the steps that you use to solve an equation. And so if we're going to use properties of equality in order to justify solutions to equations, we need to learn the properties of equality that we're going to be using for such things. And you're going to find that these are properties that you've used a ton of times already and just might not call, have called them by these names before. All right, first property of equality that you're going to want to know about is called the addition property of equality. Now, all these properties of equalities are, are things that you can do in order to rearrange an equation, so to speak. And you'll see what I mean by that in a moment. But they're all used for solving equations. If you have an equation, A is equal to B then it turns out, according to the addition property of equality, that a plus c is equal to b plus c. In other words, if I were to take an equation and I was to add the same thing to both sides of the equation, the expression on either side will still be equal to one another. That's all the addition property of equality is. Now, here's where you would see that put into practice. For example, if you have the equation 3x minus 7 equals 17, what is it that you're going to do to both sides to solve the equation? Well, you know you would try to cancel out this minus 7 by adding 7 to both sides, and the result would be that you would get 3x equals 24. And the reason we can say that we know 3x equals 24 based on the previous equation is because the addition property of equality guarantees that when I add the same thing to both sides, the two new expressions are equal to one another as well. Okay, so hopefully you kind of get the idea of what a property of equality is. And there's going to be the related properties of equality. Um, there's going to be the subtraction property of equality, which will be if you have an equation and you subtract the same value c from both sides, that the two expressions are still equal to one another. And for example, then, if you had 6 plus 9x equals 3x, in order to get all the variable terms on the same side of the equation, you would want to subtract 9x from both sides here, wouldn't you? So... The fact that 6 is equal to negative 6x is justified by the subtraction property of equality. Now, make sure when you use an addition or a subtraction property of equality, that means you added or subtracted the same value from both sides of the equal sign, not on a single side. And then there's going to be, of course, the multiplication property of equality, which would be where you multiply both sides of the equation by the same value. All right, So multiply both sides by real number c. So here, if I were to multiply both sides by 5 halves, that would cancel out this 2 fifths and get x by itself. 16 times 5 halves is 16 times 5, that's 80, divided by 2 is 40. That's the multiplication property of equality. And then there's the division property of equality, of course, which would be if you divide both sides of the equation by the same value, you still got two equal expressions. So if I had negative 9x equals 36, and I divided both sides by negative 9, that justifies that x is equal to negative 4. Now, one more property of equality that we're going to talk about in this video, there's a couple more that we'll use, generally speaking. Um, that other property for this video that we'll discuss is the substitution property of equality. And you've used it many times before. Um, if you have the equation a equals b, if you know the two values a and b are, are equal to one another, rather, then a can be substituted for b in any equation or expression. So suppose, for example, that we had the equation x plus 2y is equal to 10, and we knew that y is equal to x minus 1. Well, one of the problems with this equation is that you can't solve it for either x or y because you've only got one equation and two different variables. But if I take the second equation and I substitute this value of x into the equation in place of y, like so, then suddenly I have an equation with only one variable in it. 
and the property that allows me to replace this y with x plus 1, or x minus 1 rather, is the substitution property of equality. Well, we've talked about some of the properties that you can use to justify solutions of equations. Now let's actually get, in, in, let's actually get into using those properties of equality. The directions for this example, these couples of examples that we're going to do, are to solve the equation and to write a reason for each step. All right. Now remember, we're trying to get you prepared for writing proofs about geometric figures in coming lessons, very near lessons. And those, pro those proofs are often going to be written in two-column form. And so the solutions of equations here, I'm going to write them using two columns. Now here's the idea. We're really making what's called a logical argument, where in the left-hand column, we're going to have some statements that we are claiming to be true. And just like we're a lawyer, if we're claiming that something is true, we're going to need a reason to justify why that fact, supposed fact is true. And that's what the reasons column is going to be for. And every time we put something in this equation column, we have to justify how we know that that statement in the equation column is true. All right. Now, you might wonder how in the world are we supposed to justify that 25 minus 3x plus 17 is equal to 4x plus 14. Well, at some point, you're always given some information. You have a premise that you're working off of. The first reason that you're going to use in any equation solving and 99.99% .99 of proofs is going to be that this is true because it was information given to you. Let's write that. So never miss that first step in a proof. Always, you know, this thing is true because it's given to you, basically. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to apply properties of equality in order to solve this equation, and we'll keep writing reasons why we know each step is true. Now, if you're trying to solve this equation, which you are, it turns out, first thing you would want to do is try to simplify the expression on either side of the equation. And there is some simplifying we can do on that left side of the equation that I was just highlighting, while there's nothing I can do over here quite yet. So let's go ahead and combine our light terms right here. We've got the 25 and the 17, and of course together that adds up to 42. So we can now say the equation is 42 minus 3x is equal to 4x plus 14. Now, important note here, you might say that we just used the addition property of equality, but all we did was combine light terms really. We didn't add the same value to both sides of the equation, and that's what's required for you to be using the addition property of equality. Anytime you just combine like terms or you know, did something that only involved the expression on one side of the equation, what you're going to do is you're just going to say that you simplified. So through simplification, we know that this equation is true. All right, now our next goal is this, and we're only going to do one step at a time. Let's go ahead and get the variables on one side of the equation. And probably what you would do then is you would try to cancel out this minus 3x from both sides, wouldn't you? And you would do so by adding 3x to both sides of the equation. Now that's key that we're adding it to both sides of the equation. The result being that you would get 42 on the left side. And on the right side, now you would have 7x plus 14. And since we did add the same value to each side of the equation, we use the addition property of equality. Now note the way that I'm abbreviating here because you will be allowed to do such things. That's short for addition, this is short for property, and of equality, I'll just put of an equal sign like that. All right, what else would we need to do then? The next thing would then be, let's get all the constant terms away from our variable terms. We need to cancel out this 14. We'll do so by subtracting 14 from both sides. That makes our next equation 28 is equal to 7x, and, yep, you're right, we use the subtraction property of equality. Now, don't abbreviate subtraction, S-U-B, because remember there was also the substitution property. So I need at least S-U-B-T to differentiate between subtraction and substitution. And then we can abbreviate the rest the same way we just did above. And then finally, we would finish solving by dividing both sides by 7. And so that would give us 4 is equal to x. And that would be using the division property of equality, of course. 
All right, now there actually is one more thing I'm going to do within this equation just so I expose you to another property, but not because the equation is not solved. Um, you see how the variable is on the right side of the equation and the constant term is on the left? And there's nothing wrong with leaving your solution that way, but oftentimes we prefer to write it with the variable on the left and its equivalent real number of value on the right. And whenever you want to just switch what's on either side of the equation like that, it turns out you're using a specific property of equations called the symmetric property of equality. Now I'll write that out completely here because it's the first time you've heard of it. Symmetric property of equality. Now we're going to do one more example here. And I'll tell you the reason I want to do it is just so I can show you one more property at use, really, more than anything else. But you've seen the gist of what you need to for this video so far. As such, what I'd really like to do is see if you can go ahead and solve this equation and justify it on your own. In which case, I would like you to pause the video and try that out right now. All right? And so then, of course, you would listen to me or skip ahead to see if you got the, the justification correct. Of course, if you're not sure where to start, just go ahead and listen to me from right now. All right, as we said before, always the reason you know that the original statement that you're given is true is that it was indeed given to you. So that will justify the equation that you see on your screen. And now we have to start going through the process of using properties in order to get x by itself. And the first property that you're going to use is the distributive property, right? We can use the distributive property on both sides of the equal sign, which would give us negative 14x minus 7 on the left, and it would give us negative 15x minus 10 on the right. Now, we did use the distributive property, but I don't want you thinking that that's a property of equality, because the distributive property works whether or not you have an equation, and properties of equality have to work for equations only. Okay, so... We did use the distributive property, but just hopefully you get that distinction that I did not write of equality there. All right, well, what's next? Let's say we add 15x to both sides to cancel out the negative 15x, and that will give us x minus 7 equals negative 10. And of course, that's the addition property of equality since we added the same thing to both sides. And it looks like we're about to use that same step again, right? Because we're going to need to add 7 to both sides here. And that will give us x is equal to negative 3. So there you go. That's how you use properties of equality to justify equations. And the most important takeaway from this is that you understand the idea of a logical argument, which is what we were making, where you just write statements that are true in one column, and then you give a reasoning to justify why those statements are true in the second column. All right. Thank you for your attention, guys. Good luck with the proofs as you start those. See ya.